Hey guys, I don't know what happened. My brain's broke. The header says that this thing starts at four o'clock. All of the announcements that I did said 4.30. So we're gonna split the difference. I have gone ahead and started this thing now, but I'm not gonna start stitching yet. I'm gonna run through the stuff that I do to get prepared and ready so that you guys can see um, what I do to my machine before I start a stitch day, um, how I cut my stuff, how I figure out what I'm doing. Um, and this is a really bad time for me to, to give advice on, on how to do something when I can't even remember what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing I do um, on the start of every stitch day is I go ahead and I pop, this is a PE 770, this is Cora. She has got more miles on her than you can imagine, but she is one of my trusty little machines. So I take my little brush and every time I go to use her. Now, if you only use it for one pattern, once every you know week or so, you don't need to do this. But when I use her, I use her for anywhere from a minimum of five patterns, except for today, she's just doing the one, um, to 15 or 20 patterns in a day. So she gets lots of stitch time. I make sure there's no lint down here in the race. And then I come over here and I check the thread cutter. She does not cut between jumps, but she does cut between color stops. So I make sure that there are no little hangy outies. I also clean my little bobbin basket, make sure that I don't see any dust or debris in there. I put it back in, there we go. Um, put the plate back on. And then I um, start with a fresh bobbin, uh, usually because the bobbin from the stitch before, uh, stitch out before probably has nothing left on it. And I like to not um, start the very first pattern of the day and then immediately have my bobbin run out. So there's that. The other thing I do, whether um, I need it or not, I put a fresh needle in. Um, again, because she could have run 15 patterns yesterday or 20 or 25. So we put a new needle in to start the day. I buy these by the hundreds. I use the Oregon 7511 um, HAX, Hax Needles, and I think they're just as good as any others. While I'm putting this needle in, I make sure that that little aluminum hook at position six is on top of the steel hook. If it's not on a PE770 or even just about any of the single needle P um, brothers, um, she'll thread shred like, or she'll shred thread like nobody's business. And you'll be sitting there going, why is this? Okay, so for this one, for the demo, I did um, this beautiful um, color shifting purple with a yellow and black highlights. And then I did um, a light purple glitter canvas on the inside and gold glitter canvas. So I've already done it in the purple and gold, the regal colors. So today, since it's all French, I'm gonna do it in the colors of the French flag. Um, also, the one thing about these stitch and bitch sessions that's pretty awesome and pretty cool is that I get to play with a lot of the vinyl that I don't regularly use um, for product demos for the website because I'm supposed to be showing off on the product demos the pattern so that you guys wanna go buy my pattern. But here, I get to play with all my pretty, pretty vinyl. Um, so this will be the outside. Um, and it's kind of a satin looking thing. And then on the inside, just plain white, cause I'm not gonna use up a lot of the good stuff for the inside of it. And then the two pockets on the inside, the French flag goes blue, white, red. So one pocket's gonna be blue and the other pocket's gonna be red. How is that for tacky? Then I've got my red ribbon for the bookmark and I've got some blue FOE for the pin holder. And just keeping with the whole Frenchified theme, I went and found a red glitter pin and a little blue um, notebook. 
the notebooks that fit best in this um, little uh, posh book are going to be, and there's still a lot of room, um, are going to be the mini composition books, three and one quarter by four and a half, and they've got 50 sheets in them. Um, there is enough room so that for our European and Aussies who don't have posh books or little notebooks exactly the same size, they can find ones that fit. Also, your um, passport will fit in here. Um, and I'd demo and show you that if I had a passport handy, but I don't know where I put mine. So um, I know I had it not too long ago. I just can't remember. I put it in a safe place so it wouldn't get lost. And you know what that means, right? I'll never find it again. Okay, so, um, petition to call dudes hangy outies from here on in. Okay, all they do is hang out on their, in their man caves. Yane, I've, I've got to ask what happened to you today. <laughs> There's got to be a story behind that. All right, so I'm going to set all of this stuff aside, and I'm going to load in my pattern. There it is. And then I'm going to make notes to myself because I'm doing this differently. Uh -huh. So I want, I think I want my fleur de lis to be in red. So that means this dark purple is going to go blue. Um, and then I guess I'll come back and do red for the lettering on the back side. I'll do white for my tack together. Um, yeah, I'll do white for my tack together so I can use a white bobbin. And that also, or see if this is red and this is blue. Yeah, we'll leave it white. We'll see how that looks. Um, so now we need to do some cutting. And I'm going to set this aside for your one quarter to one half inch ribby ribbon. You're going to need approximately eight to eight and a half inches. I'm going to start by trimming this tail because it's frayed. And if all of you are flashing back to the horrible joke I told day before yesterday, yay, my work here is done. And then I am going to cut a nice straight line right there. So there is my ribby ribbon. And now what did I put the pin somewhere? Where did I put the pin? Arg! No! That's okay. My dude worked on the boat down at our dock today. Glad to get him out from under my feet. Okay, and now um, for our um, FOE, our pretty... Um, Fold over elastic, we need three at two and a half inches. So am I, I'm not on screen. You can't see what I'm doing. That is very bad presentation form. Uh, can you see me now? Ha. Huh. So we need three of these at two and a half inches. So that's one, two, three. Yay! And I'm going to set those aside and we'll promptly lose them because it's me and I do that. And then I'm going to find the pin. There's the pin. I did not lose the pin. Yay! We're also going to tilt this camera back to the working space a little bit because working this far away from my body is awkward. There we go. All right, so for the main um, cover, I am using this really cool um, vinyl that I got from Jane at New Moon Stitches and the top panel of your posh book cover needs a piece of vinyl six inches by eight inches. This is a 12 inch wide roll so I'm going to cut it to 12 inches and then I'm going to put that out of the way. Cut it in half. This is a six inch wide ruler. Six inches wide. So now I have two six by eight pieces. One will be used for today. And the other I will put in my um, large scrap bin and probably whip that puppy out and use it for something later. And then, 
So that's gonna, I, need to, I am not organized. I need to get that out of my way and I need to get that out of my way and I hate that. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the just plain white marine vinyl boring that's gonna go on the inside. And the reason I'm using two different vinyls, one for the outside, one for the inside, is because that purdy vinyl is more expensive and I wanna save up the good stuff so that I can show it off. And the inside just needs, you know, as a matter of fact, I saw somebody say the other day that in, on their inside, they don't use for the whole cover, they don't use vinyl, they use a piece of Olifun, which is totally cool and totally fine, and you can do that. But I would recommend that for the pockets, you use either um, canvas, glitter canvas, or marine vinyl. So there is my inside pocket. And now I'm going to need two pieces for the pockets, and they are two and a half inches wide by six inches, two and a half by six inches. So, because I'm gonna be doing more things that require six inches, no dirty comments, keep your perverted minds to yourself. I'm gonna cut a strip of six inch right there. And in case you are um, wondering, I am using, believe it or not, ha ha, he he, slap bracelets to keep my vinyl rolls together. Um, I get 188 of them for like 13 bucks off of Amazon. Amazon is awesome that way. Cheap junk delivered to your house. So there's one pocket, and this goes in my large scrap bin, which for right now is behind me on a shelf. And then here is my blue. Um, are all posh notebooks the same size pieces of vinyl? Yes, ma'am. Two pieces of six by eight and two pieces of two and a half by six. They are all exactly the same. Um, all of the ribbon is eight, um, eight to nine inches and all the FOEs are three pieces at two and a half inches. Measurements are all exactly the same. And I need a slap bracelet. And the first time that I take a slap bracelet out of the bucket, I get to actually slap it. I know, I am a big giant child and they let me use power tools. What is up with that? Two and a half inches. That's what's up with that. If I'm remembering my French flag correctly. Big piece of leftover. All right, so when we are done, we'll have our design on the outside. And then when we open it up, it'll look like that. How awesome is that? Okay, now let's see, we've cut all of our vinyl and we've cut, um, we've cut our ribbons and elastic. I am gonna need um, a piece of WSS um, for when we attach all the backs so that they don't catch on your needle plate. And I probably just cut the world's largest piece of WSS. Yeah, that's way too big, but I was in a hurry. So there's that. Okie dokie pokies. Now we need to hoop up some stabilizer. Um, my favorite stabilizer is um, medium weight cutaway. So medium weight cutaway. And we're gonna hoop it up. And we're gonna make sure there's no wrinkles in it. See, there was a wrinkle. And now I'm gonna tighten this all the way up. Tight, tight, tight. And you don't need to get out a screwdriver to tighten this. It's just finger tight. You wanna make sure that nothing slips, slides, or moves away. All right, so our first design color is gonna be red. So I'm gonna go ahead and preload the red thread and use it for my die lines and my tack downs. Remember, nobody's ever gonna see that. That's gonna be on the insides of stuff. So it just saves you one step of, of reloading a thread color. So what time is it? What time is it? It is 4.14, we are still 15 minutes early. I've cleaned my machine, I've loaded my machine, I've cut my vinyl. I've made idle chit chat. <coughs> the, 
There are 38 people here. Should I go ahead and start or should I wait a few more minutes for the people who think it starts at 4.30 because I lied to them? Tell me what to do. Hey, did everybody run and get their freebie? I love those little peeps. Let's see if I've got them in the studio with me or if they're still sitting out over by the other. Yes, I have them. Look at these guys. I love these guys. Make sure that you go get them today because tonight at midnight, they go, they go away until the next sale. And before you go, when's the next sale? Ooh, not for a little while because we just got done with the um, um, 10K half off sale like three weeks ago. As much as I'd love to start, I think you should wait. Okay, Virginia, I'll wait. They can watch. Oh, and Christina's like, no, they can watch it later. <laughs> yeah, there's a freebie, honey. Um, Elizabeth, there's a hop going on. So there's a freebie. My little disgruntled peeps. You know, when I put up a new um, drop on Mondays, my mom-in-law um, calls or emails me and goes, okay, I want the demo for this one, this one, and this one. Um, these were not up on Monday's drop, obviously. They're only up today because today's my day on the hop. Um, and I know she's going to go, those are really cute, but can you do one without the words on them? Because those are naughty words. All right, let's go ahead and get our camera angle better. And people are starting to trickle in. We're up to 42. Couldn't do hop overwhelmed. That seems to be the, the yeah, that seems to be going around. You're not the only one, Elizabeth. But the words make them so fun. I know Yanni, but she doesn't like the naughty words. Is everything tight? I feel like everything's all floppy. Nope, that's as tight as that's gonna get. Unless I get, you're just here for the tapey tape. <laughs> the word thing stressed me out. I had to quit after the first day. I'm sorry. That was a different hop. I didn't do that one. I mean, I participated in it, but I didn't have any part of it, of organizing it. I'm sorry that it stressed you. You're shopping for the slap bracelets? Yeah, there's like, a, I think it's 188 for $13 on Amazon. They're way cool. All right, well, I am going to go ahead and start. It is 4.20. I'm starting early. I'm sorry. So we've hooped up our stabilizer. We've put in our bobbin. We've threaded our thread. Let's go ahead and put that hoop in and put our foot down. And we're going to stitch out our die line, our placement lines for absolutely everything. And you are totally going to need your tapey tape. Um, Elizabeth, I have got a secret private source. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, hey. Houston, we have a problem. Um, crap. Yeah, the cam... Yeah, the camera armature that this camera's hanging off of caught on my hoop and ripped my hoop out of the machine. So, I know. Um, we are going to have to redo a little organization here. Let's pull the machine out. All right. 
right, so we're going to dump that pattern because, and I'm gonna have to turn off and turn on to reset X, Y axis at the X, Y axis because that completely ripped, that completely ripped the hoop right out of the arm. So I probably screwed something up. Wow. Sorry about that guys. Okay, so that is completely reset. And now it should miss um, the armature. Wow, I've never had that happen before. <laughs> the powers that said no starting early. Okay, so yeah, that's on me. Yeah, I had no idea that this was going to be, I was gonna need a stunt double. Okay, here we go. All right, we are totally missing the armature now. Woo! Trish, if you do not want um, on a, a fob on the final attachment of the back, if you don't, if you want your knot to look a lot more clean and neat, then yes, you're supposed to hold your tail. I, I don't hold my tails because my 770s don't make a mess on the back of my fobs. Like some of you, I've seen some of you and I'm like, yikes, what happened there? But no, you don't have to hold your tails. Okay, so I'm gonna readjust the cameras. Anybody who's got vertigo, you might wanna hang on so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, you're a witch, I'm convinced. <laughs> Honey, you have no idea. So I am going to raise this and change its position so you can see what the heck I'm doing. There we go. Um, I'm going to these really long jumps they can be really bad for catching your needle foot. So I always trim, even though, you know, no one's ever gonna see them, I don't want them to catch anything. So I always trim them off. Now we are going to attach stuff. The first thing I attach is my ribby ribbon. And you want to place your ribby ribbon. Can you guys see this? I can't. I'm gonna slide the machine out of the way and slide this up. Now you can see what I'm doing. All right, so, ah. Your ribby ribbon, you want about a quarter of an inch down below this. When it's in the machine, it looks like this. So we're doing this far right-hand line, um, except that I'm turning the hoop like this. So I'm gonna take a piece of tapey tape and center it on that dial line and tape it down. Make sure you don't tape on the die line, tape below the die line. Otherwise your tape is going to get sewed in and that'll be fine, it's not a catastrophe, but sometimes the tape catches the thread and you get looping. I'm also gonna tape that ribbon out of the way. And then because I have done this before, I am now in the habit of pinning 
the excess ribbon to the excess stabilizer far, far out of the way. Otherwise, you get all the way to the end and you realize that you have sewn this ribbon onto the back of the posh book somewhere. So it's tragic, it's bad, I try to avoid it. Now we're down here where the two die lines are. We're gonna take, these are two and a half inches long. You fold them over raw end to raw end. Take a little piece of tape and you want about one quarter of an inch down past the die line. Tape it, tape it, tape it. And you also want a stabilizer piece of tape back here just to hold it in place. So let's, let's do it in slow-mo. Slow-mo. Yes, it's a posh book. We're making a posh book. I keep accidentally pressing back and coming out of the live feed. My phone is terrible. I'm sorry. All right, so slow motion recapture. Line up your raw ends. Place one quarter of an inch past the die line. Tapey tape. Tapey tape. Rotate your hoop. Is that getting okay so how about fast forward so line up your raw ends boom piece of tape one quarter of an inch past your die line boom tape down and voila <laughs> okay so now we're going to put it back in the machine and run color stop does the ribbon go right inside go right side up um the FOE, you fold so the pretty side's on the outside. On your ribby ribbon, there's no pretty side or ugly side. If you're using a satin ribbon, then I would put the pretty side down on a satin. You sound like Dory when she talks to the whales. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's go ahead. Oh, I have to reposition the machine so that it doesn't rip out of the arm again. Ugh. So much work, so much trouble. Okay, folks, that was Color Stop 2. That's the tack down for our FOE and our ribby ribbons. Now we are going to take our hoop out and move our machine out of the way. And we are going to, again, these big long jumps, cut them. You don't need them. You don't want them. They're just a source of pain and trouble. Now we're going to take up the four inner pieces, inside pieces of tapey tape. And I'm gonna use them here again in a minute. Now we're going to put, we're gonna float our first piece of vinyl, your prettiest piece of vinyl, the partiest one. She won the beauty contest. And you wanna make sure that your left, right, top, and bottom are completely covered by your vinyl, okay? The whole shebang needs to be covered up. And I am just going to put these already used pieces of tapey tapes in the corners. I don't expect an earthquake. I don't expect a tornado, although I do live in Texas. I don't expect a hurricane, but in case a natural disaster happens, my vinyl is now staying in my hoop. Everything else is going to get destroyed, but my vinyl will stay in my hoop. All right, so we've got that in. We are going to run color stop three, which is the fleur-de-lis. On the original 
pattern. I'd done it in gold or a golden yellow. On this one, I'm doing it in red because I got this idea. If you don't like the fray threads. Oh, yeah. Kel's right. You can play with fire, although um, by state statute, I've been forbidden to play with fire. And we are going to pull the machine back out away from the arm. That's going to get tiresome. I'm going to have to speak to the engineer in the house and get his opinion on how we do this. Because this is the way we do. So that I don't have to keep doing that stuff. All right. Are we ready, guys? Let's rock and roll. I know, I just played jump chicken. I'm a bad, bad teacher. I'm setting an awful example. Facebook Live, I'd be on my camera or on my phone right now looking up bad jokes to tell you while the stitch is out. But I literally don't have any. Hey Cheryl, we're making a posh book.
Okay, I've got two little jumps that I want to clean up. So, I don't know if you guys uh, can see them. There's a jump. Wow, I do not like how this vinyl... Yeah, I definitely should have realized how floppy doppy this is. Um, that's that's not making me happy. All right, well, it's not too late to salvage some stuff. So what I am going to do is I'm going to take the tape up. I'm going to peel this up. I'm going to put a little squirt of 505 right there. And I am going to stretch this out a little bit. Okay. I'm going to put a little hit in this corner too. Let's see if I can't get it to lay a little flatter and stretchier. And ooh. And a little hit down here. Let's see if I can't. That is some floppy vinyl. My bad. And now, okay, I got that to lay a little flatter. Hopefully, now I got to dry it, but that's okay. I've also got to do a thread change. So, dry. I noticed Ray's not here. Otherwise, she'd be yelling at me at the, about the 505. All right, we're going to change our thread. Ouch. Because we're going to be doing the front lettering. And I want it in a very regal looking blue. That feel dry. That feels dry. Well, let's see what happens, folks. Put it in the machine. Load it up. Get the camera back in place. Oh, got to move the machine back in place. And away we go. Bernice, I'm sorry your kiddo has a bad tummy. Mel, I have no idea what I'm doing.
looks like it's time for me to do some work. So I'm gonna pop this off of the machine. Oh yeah, we got some jump stitches. Good news is because it's a cursive font, a script font instead of um, a print font, um, a block font, there's not a, as many jumps, but there are still jumps. Sorry, it's a function of lettering and then there's just really no way <laughs> there's really no way to hide it. Sorry. So, I'm trying to think. What can I talk about? What can I say? You're all staring at me. Stop it. Usually at this point, you know, I've got a PowerPoint going. And um, are there any questions? Please raise your hand. Did everybody do the homework last night? Remember, your quiz is next Friday. We'll do a study guide on Wednesday. I don't know what I'm doing here, okay? So, just pretend you're entertained and watching me clip jumps is not, like, the single most boring thing in the entire world. I feel so awkward. I really do. I'm about ready to go bust out some of my old teaching notes. Um, and the next time we do this, you're going to get lectures on some of my favorite things from history. Because uh, seriously. Oh, that's not a jump. That's part of the stitch. Oops. Have you guys ever done that? <laughs> Let's see. Your dog ate your homework. Your cat clawed up your homework. Y'all, I have heard it all. There is not a single homework story that you could tell me that I had not already heard some variation of. The number one most popular one, and I thought it was really kind of sad, was um, I, I was over at my one parent's house, but it was time for me to go back to the other parent's house, and I left all my books at the first parent's house, and they won't bring them to me. That always made me really sad. Of course, I gave them an extension. Okay, well, when's the next time you go over to that parent's house? All right, well, if you turn it in the very next day, then I won't take points off. Remember to get all of your crap. I spin, as I'm cutting jumps, I spin my hoop so that I can come in at my jumps at an angle that works best for me. I've noticed that some people keep the hoop all in the same position and bend their wrist and contort their body to get at their jumps. And that just, unless it's still in the machine, which we shouldn't do, that's bad machine etiquette. You're going to wind up killing yourself. Um, if you've got your hoop out of the machine and you're just on your surface, you can move your hoop around to cut your jumps at any angle you want. Of course, this is not my preferred angle for cutting jumps. My preferred, uh, let's give you a little bit better view. There we go. My preferred angle is sitting on my chair or my stool and having the hoop in my lap. But I don't think you guys want 45 minutes of crotch shot, do you? If so, Pornhub. Y'all are in the wrong place. And the laughter was deafening. Really miss going to see them on Zoom tomorrow. How is Corey? How is um, teleteaching working? How, you know, I know the kids are not making tremendous progress, but are they at least advancing a little bit? Are they getting down with the program? How's it going for you? Is there any reason why the design doesn't start at the top, i.e. it starts at the middle and works down, then it comes back to the middle and works up so that 
if the design started at the top, at the top and went like we read left to right down to bottom, then it would shift minutely um, your vinyl all the way to the bottom and your, um, your registration errors will show up, up here when you go to do tack togethers. So good digitizing always starts in the middle and works its way out to push evenly in all four directions. You're cutting out glow in the dark at ats and Millennium Falcons. Awesome. Let's see. Knowing you, there's a good reason. Just wondering. Okay. Um, Michelle, did I answer your question? Ooh, no, don't look. I don't know why it did that. I have no makeup on and my hair is in a bun. All right. <laughs> okay. So now we're doing the other lettering and I want to do that lettering in red. But I also want to move the machine back in place. So. Move the machine back in place. I figured out why um, on the previous stitch and bitch sessions, we did not have this problem with the embroidery arm hitting the camera armature. Um, it's because we were doing a four by four hoop. This is a five by seven hoop. So it's going to have, um, a bigger reach towards the back and that's why. So I, geometry, I did not plan correctly. I'm sorry. All right. We're loading up our red and I hope we are clear and in frame and in focus and go. Eileen, I put on a bra and shoes for you guys. Not that you would know, but it just felt weird being barefoot in commando in the studio. Like my machines were judging me. Going, yeah, we knew you were a people of Walmart.
Time to cut some more jumps. Oh, come here. And we push the machine out of the way. And we readjust the camera. And we start snippy snipping. So it looks like we don't have, I mean, we've got some bubbling but it didn't do too bad once I threw a little 505 on there. But very definitely, if I use this particular vinyl again, I will be doing some um, medium um, iron on um, interfacing on the back to stiffen this puppy up because it does look like it wants to stretch. And I probably should have noted that when I was cutting it and playing with it, that it was a little bit floppy, didn't have a lot of body, wasn't going to hold up well. My bad. Sorry, guys. I don't know why I'm apologizing. This is going to be my posh book. So if it's wrinkly, I'm just tell them it's a new style. It's the Sharpay style. I have a Sharpay posh book. Okay, da, da, da. let's see. Shredding pickup today, we definitely think. Okay, almost done. One more word of jumps. Yay! And then comes the attachment of the back and the pockets. And then the cutty outy, which I gather is the one that you guys have the most problems with. And I've been trying different solutions. I've been trying to think of different things. And so far... I haven't come up with anything better, but every time I make a posh book, I do try something different. And if it works better, then I will definitely tell you all about it. Okie dokies. So we've got all of our snips, our jumps clipped and snipped, and we're ready to step up to the next step. Um, Arctic vinyl on the back of the...
what kind of tweezers are those. Um, actually, it comes in a four pack. Um, and, and Kel and I were, Kel ordered some from Amazon and uh, it, the pack she ordered was not the, um, Amelo ones that I ordered, but they're identical. Same color. It comes four to a pack. Um, so when I'm done here, I'll put the link up. They are ingrown hair tweezers, Amazon. Yep. Totally did. Okay. So let's flip it over. So there's going to be a couple of things we need to do right now. See these straight single stitch lines right there. Those are our alignment lines for placing the pocket vinyl. The problem is once we put the back vinyl on, we're not going to be able to see those. So you need to manually carry those out. So take a straight edge of any kind and take um, a marker of some kind. You don't have to use um, a Sharpie. You just want to be able to see where the straight line is supposed to be. And then you need to do this one down here too. Because once we put the back pocket on our back cover on, we can't see those lines anymore. And we need them for alignment. Okay. So I tried to get them in Oz. Okay, so now we take the back vinyl or canvas or whatever you decided. The only alignment on this is you need to make sure that you are covering the, the, rectangle, the rounded rectangle. It doesn't matter how high or low or any of that stuff you put it. You just need to be covering the entire rectangle. And you don't need to put a lot of tape on this one because here in a minute we are going to be using all the tape. Okay, so when I open it up... I want it to go blue, then red. So we'll put the red here, because I want it to look like a French flag when I open it up. Why? Because it tickles my fancy. And we're gonna line this up so that this line right here, <coughs> this line right here is a straight line. And we're gonna put a little, careful when you're taping this one so that you don't put it on your stitch line, so that you don't stitch your tape into your tack together stitch. Okay, and now we're gonna put the other pocket on. And again, we wanna line up this line, this line, two points, make a perfectly straight line. Then we're gonna put a little tape, just a little bit to hold it in place. Cause here in a minute we are gonna saran wrap this like a 1950s mom sending a lunch to school. Okay, now, um, no matter what machine you are, uh, you have this transition right here is going to catch on your needle plate and fold under and fold over. <coughs> and um, it's gonna cause all kinds of havoc and rip things up and look ugly. So we need to put some WSS over this whole mashugana so that it acts as a gliding source, okay? So I am going to come up here and I'm gonna put um, a piece of tape there and there. And then I'm gonna turn this around and I am actually gonna tug just a little bit I mean, don't tug like enough to untape it, but I do want to make sure that it's stretched across my work. And it doesn't matter if the WSS is wrinkly. Um, we are going to be, you know, once this is all done, pulling it off anyway. But there we go. So there we go. That's nice and tight. That's nice and tight. That's nice and tight. Okay. And I think I decided... And it looks like a French flag. I'm so cool. All right. I think I decided, I said I was going to do, I said I was going to do white, but I think I'm going to do blue. I think I changed my mind and I am not going to match my bobbin. I'm going to use a white bobbin on the inside, the same bobbin we were. Have you tried partridge? It, it, it's, uh, Amazon is not, Debbie, I've ordered it. 
Amazon's not delivering as quickly as they usually do because they have other essential things they need to deliver. My parchment paper apparently is not important, and that's fine, and I understand that. It's on its way. As soon as I get parchment paper, I will let you know how that goes. But it's not here yet. Okay, so blue. I'm gonna load up my blue top stitch, and I'm using a white bobbin. I don't know how that's gonna look, but we will see. And we're gonna, and now we are gonna move the camera up and the machine back into place. So that the machine doesn't hit the camera. And drop it like it's hot. Ooh. Oh, wow. Guys, something ain't right. Look what happened here. So, guess I get to change a needle. I'm wondering if my thread got hung up on something. Okay, so on my pattern, I've stepped back to the start of this color stop. And I'm loading my needle. There we go, and we're gonna re-thread. And we're gonna make sure this time Ah, it did catch, aha, it got caught on the lamp. That's what happened. So that should be fine now. Okay, let's try this one more time. There we go. No, it's not bad needle, Stephanie, it's bad Ricky. I didn't, what? Check and rethread. It's threaded. Go. Uh huh. Hey guys, I think Cora's having a hissy fit. Yep, Cora's having a hissy fit. Well, it's not the end of the world if after this rethread the bottom or rethread the top, I can't get her to do what she's supposed to do. She will go in the timeout quarter and I will go pull Betty over here to do the last stitch so we can finish this thing. And that's all it took was unthread and rethread, top and bottom, and now it's like, okay, sure, fine, whatever. I swear these machines. Enough to make you drink, ain't it? Bam a lamb, Jenny. Bam a lamb. I'm not a witch, I'm your wife. And sometimes I don't even wanna be that.
Debbie, I'm glad that our technical difficulties are enlightening. All right, Cora, you're done. I am going to turn you off. And I'm actually going to semi-take you apart and get you out of my way. So that I can do the rest of this without you glaring at me. Ah, except I have no place to put her. There we go. This reminds me, I probably have fun with that earworm. Thank you, darling. Okay, so we have a couple of um, hairs, a couple of threads to clean up on the back. Um, one of them from where Betty decided she was not threaded, or Cora decided she was not threaded when she was. And then one of them is the knot. Don't cut the knot but you can cut the arms off of the knot. And there we go, there we go. Okay, so what I do first is I tear off the WSS and it should tear nice and easy right along your perforation. Let's back you up a little bit so you get the full panoramic view. There you go, oops. Come here little tweezers, there we go. And then I tear the, um, the, the center out of it. And again, it should right along the perf. All right, mostly along the perf, whatever. Good enough for government work. There we go. Come here. There you go. All right, now I don't actually have to take all of this tapey tape off because when I pop it out of the hoop, it'll stick to the hoop instead of the WSS, or not the WSS, the um, stabilizer. But guess what, I did. Also, from time to time, remember to take your pin out. And now, snap, crackle, pop. You know, it's when you guys are watching that I realize just how inelegant and bumbly I am. Oi. Okay. So, the only easy cut on this one is at the bottom because there's no jutty outies you have to worry about. So, you line up your ruler to one-eighth of an inch. And I am nowhere near in. And then you just swoop like that. After that, things start to suck. Or put on a nice curly wig on her and call her Betty White. Okay, now we are going to slide. Um, and I have not um, come up with a better way. Somebody said a spack knife for like putting on drywall spack works really well. Um, I haven't tried that one yet. But I slide a hem ruler right up in there. Um, okay, so pull your vinyl back. You want to put your hem ruler or block or um, spac knife or whatever you're using between the top vinyl and the FOE. We're trying to protect the FOE from getting sliced when we cut this. Now the problem is I'm trying to hold everything in place exactly right, nothing slipping while you do this. Well, 48 people watch you live slice off a finger. There we go. There we go. Okay. And there's somebody, I saw them post a picture, I don't know if it was Kel or, her, or who, they sliced through their hem ruler. Girl, you are putting, that was me at Works okay. Yeah, somebody was putting way too much elbow into their cutting. Now, I'm going to fold it back. You want to put your hem ruler 
right up into that seam with your ribby ribbon behind and your top vinyl on top. Now we line up to one eighth of an inch so it has the same uniform all the way around. We're gonna go slow and carefully. You don't have to press super hard. It's just one piece of vinyl that you're splitting off, okay? Nice and easy. Like CoverGirl, nice and easy does it. Now there's two FOEs you have to protect down here. Make sure you get both of them behind the ruler. Push that ruler down into the um, seam really good. Line up your ruler. Remember, we want to keep everything in place. Watch your hand, watch your fingers. All right, we only have three more cuts to go. So now we flip it over, and this time we need to get between um, the FOE and the stabilizer. Okay, so you're getting you're cutting through three layers now. The um, pocket, the backing, and the stabilizer. So get your ruler way down in there. Kind of like, you know, the underwear that likes to crawl up your butt. You want it all the way into the crack. There you go. Now we line up on that stitch line, leaving ourselves one-eighth of an inch. And again, guys... <sighs> Slow and careful, watch your hands, don't slice your fingers. You don't need a lot of elbow. I mean, you are cutting through three layers of something. There we go, whoo, did it. How about the taping the vinyl to the hem ruler? That might work, I haven't tried that. That was nerve wracking, please be careful. If you have a five or eight pound dumbbell, you can use that to wait. Okay, Christina, that's a good idea. I'll see if I've got a dumbbell. Hey Scott, what are you doing? What else can you use if you don't have the hem ruler? Well, I ordered, um, Kel said she was using a spacking knife. Um, I ordered one of these things. This is a Cook's Essential or something, da da da, da. Um, You can see it doesn't hold up real well. <laughs> um, you could probably get 10 uses out of it, but by the time, you know, so it, it, it didn't do so well. Um, what else can you use? You want something that your roto cutter is not going to cut through, and it needs to be relatively thin. So I don't, let's see, what else can you use? Um, let me think on that. Um, piece of sheet metal um, or a piece of aluminum but it has to be thin. Okay, again, I got it. The ribby ribbons behind the ruler, um, the stabilizer, the back vinyl, and both pockets are above it. One eighth of an inch. One eighth of an inch. Okay, and again, guys, you wanna make sure you're not, you don't have to cut through that ruler. You're just cutting through the, the material on top of it. The steel rulers that were so much fun in school. Ooh, yeah, Teresa. They were fun right up until somebody whacked you with them, and then they were not so much fun. All right, and now we are going to do the last one. Make sure you put the FOE behind your hem ruler or whatever your block is. And we can brainstorm this. We can come up with something better than my hem ruler. I'm sure we can. And then one eighth of an inch, one eighth of an inch. Yay! Woohoo! All right, now we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna round our corners. We're gonna round our corners for a more perfect finished look. So roundy, roundy, roundy. Then roundy, roundy, roundy. Then, ooh, got to be careful of that elastic. So when you're roundy, roundy, roundying, don't cut the elastic. So roundy, roundy, roundy. 
roundy. There we go. And last roundy roundy. There we go. Woohoo! All done there. Now we are going to grab our little notey book and we are going to slide the front cover under the blue and the back cover under the red. Then we are going to put our bookmark in and then we are going to close it. And we are going to take our red sparkle pen because I am that person. I know, right? Obnoxious, truly. Come here. And we are going to slide our pin through all three. And there we go. It's only called quarantine if it's from the quarantine reg region of France. Otherwise, it's just sparkling isolation. A metal engineer's ruler from the office supply store. That's awesome. Okay, guys. Um, I'll be, I am going to shut off the video. And I will try and get it onto YouTube in the next couple of days. But it will still be in the video section here on the fan group. If you have questions, comments, problems, just uh, go ahead and shout out on the fan group. And I will get back to you pretty soon. Hope you guys had fun. Talk to you later. Peace.